<clears throat> Hello, uh, today is uh, August uh, 10th, uh, 2023, and we'll talk about um, uh, now about uh, Vittorio Gregotti, who died in 2020 of complications uh, uh, caused by uh, the pandemic, uh, COVID. So Vittorio Gregotti, born on the 10th of August, 1927, and died in 2020 in March, was an Italian architect born in Novara. He was seen as both a member of the neo-avant-garde and a key figure in 1970s postmodernism. Gregotti was born in Novara in the Italian Piedmont and attended the Politecnico di Milano. He worked as a contributor to Casabella an architectural magazine and was its editor-in-chief from 1955 to 1963. Gregotti founded his own studio, Gregotti Asso Associati, Associati International, in 1974, but also lectured on architectural theory and cura curated several exhibits in Italy. His studio was as designed several important sports venues and cultural buildings, such as the Barcelona Olympic Stadium, the Belem Cultural Center in Lisbon, the Archimboldi Opera Theatre in Milan, and several university campuses, including that of the University of Calabria. His studio also designed Fujiang, the new town in Shanghai, China, a new town with an Italian architectural theme. This was the man, he lived a long life, but uh, we still regret he died. Um, although he was a modern architect, you can see something behind him which was not modern at all, and is not modern at all. Not to speak about the, you know, the the frame of that mirror. You wonder, you know. You wonder. I mean, he was a, a, a modern architect, but uh, we see that in his own uh, home, uh, he indulged in, uh, in things which had nothing to do with modernism. Or it depends. Modernism, I think, could accommodate iconoclastically, even uh, theatrical pieces from other so-called um, eras or times. I like this picture of him, a man who looks at the world from a uh, distance in time, no? uh, the distance of his age, Vittorio Gregotti. Some drawings of Vittorio Gregotti, architectural through and through. Different from the drawings of Cedric Price, which we saw before. This is rather interesting that he was a modern architect, but at the same time, uh, he became uh, postmodern in rather convincing ways. But his postmodernism was not. Uh, alarmingly concerned with historicism as, uh, uh, as it happened with other architects. Casabella, the architectural uh, magazine where he was an editor-in-chief for a number of years and is still a magazine being published now, today. Um, sorry. Now, uh, so uh, I don't know, I, this was, I guess, uh, uh, an article about him when he became 90 years old. And I don't know, did he do 1,600 projects? Perhaps it's possible. Now, a church, Chiesa Madre, 
and unfortunately I do not uh, didn't uh, write down where it is. Uh, it's an unforgivable um, uh, omission. And I don't have, I only have three pictures, not enough. I'm already unhappy with my own presentation. But you see, it is a church because of the sign of the cross. Otherwise, it could have been um, something else. Uh, the cars are the cars <laughs> everywhere in the world, in front of a church or in front of anything. Casa Sforza, Stradella, 1953-1954. Very modest uh, casa, strangely called Sforza. Um, but rather interesting in its uh, vernacular uh, modesty, somehow. Vittorio Gregotti, 1972. Uh, a housing complex, which which is not bad, it is rather provocative, mainly because of the the unusual uh, placement and uh, configuration of the windows. I think the, uh, there is a suggestion here that it is possible to break the paradigm of uh, housing complex, the formal uh, visual uh, uh, paradigm of a housing complex by uh, creating unexpected uh, uh, locations for the windows. It's very possible that Frank Lloyd Wright was correct when he said that uh, by, by implication, the, 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 the words I use are not exactly his words, but he in, in essence, he said that architecture is, is not really difficult. It wouldn't be really difficult if it wasn't for the windows, how to place the windows. So here we see a, an interesting uh, uh, you know, solution, so to speak, to this problem, how to, how to break the walls with what we call windows. You know, it, it's almost like saying to make a housing complex that doesn't look like a housing complex. If you if you if you make a housing complex uh, in such a way that uh, it, it doesn't look like a typical housing complex, I think you achieve something. And I think that's what he did here, or he he managed to to achieve. Interesting work. Fabrica Textile Boss Novara, 1983. I almost said, wow. It's, a, it's an industrial building, but with uh, aesthetical uh, concerns, not to say ambitions. Vittorio Gregotti, both names of his name having a double T. Vittorio with double T and Gregotti with double T. The Centro, Centro Cultural, the Cultural Center in Lisbon, Lisbon, um, but I don't know why, it's, this is the one, it's, it's also called Centro Cultural de Belém, 1988-1992. If only culture, no, actually it wouldn't be good if culture would, would, would be so assertive within the fabric of the city. I mean, this is a monumental, uh, a monumental structure, which perhaps doesn't uh, 
express properly the vulnerability of culture actually within the you know a modern city and look at it it's it's a citadel perhaps more uh, of a wishful thinking you know um, a desire to keep solidity and uh, you know persistence permanence to culture but well, we know very well that culture is actually fragile, vulnerable. So Lisbon, Portugal, Vittorio Gregotti. Residential area in Canareggio in Venice, 1981. I, I... I actually like the, this uh, this space uh, between the two rows of, uh, of apartments or apartment buildings because it has this um, uh, you know rather enticing uh, uh, crystallization of uh, interesting spaces, bridges and stairways, and so it's it's a uh, it's a space where negotiation takes place between uh, the inhabitants of, of these two parallel uh, long uh, blocks of flats. These are not expensive, uh, you know, apartment buildings. Those white columns on the right side uh, are rather rhetorical, but otherwise you can tell that uh, there are graffitis, and it is very possible that they, their status is that of, of social housing. There were other architects who worked uh, for Venice, uh, like Alvaro Siza from Portugal and uh, Aldo Rossi. Uh, and now Vittorio Gregotti. in Venice. Morto Vittorio Gregotti per coronavirus, coronavirus, padre del Zen di Palermo, dello Zen di Palermo. Is this building, this, uh, this sports arena that he built in Palermo, Is, was presented in the media as the, the father of, I guess this large um, sports arena is called uh, Zen for some reason. Soccer, of course, in, in, in Italy, soccer is um, almost a religion, and maybe even without the word almost. I remember when I worked in the office of Paolo Portoghesi, Monday morning, 
when the, the, the architects were coming to work, they would only talk about soccer for a few hours. There in the office. They have, the Italians have, they have some dramatic stadiums, and this is one of them, designed by Vittorio Gregotti. Nuova Chiesa Parrocchiale di San Massimiliano Colben, Bergamo. Uh, yeah, when was it designed? And I don't, I didn't read, write the, the, the year. But uh, you can tell uh, that, that there was a certain influence coming from what we call postmodernism. A strange uh, interior. So Bergamo. Sorry about the resolution of this picture. Vittorio Gregotti did like a certain monumentality in his architecture. Uh, we saw it uh, in the case of the cultural center in Lisbon, in Lisbon and um, we see it in this uh, church, symmetrical as it is. He also believed in the rhetorics of the world, you know, this, you know, tenacious um, belief in, in, the, in, the, in, in the solid world, masonry world, uh, not too many ar modern architects um, indulged in. It's more like a mausoleum, this church, at least from the outside. Another church, <clears throat> Iglesia de San Clemente, is a vessel, 1991-2003. It seems the Italians uh, are quite able to raise funds for uh, both uh, you know, soccer uh, stadiums and uh, churches. Interesting that letter V there, the top, or an upside down A. I wonder what its symbol is might be. If V would stand for victory, uh, then uh, we could only remember what uh, Joseph Brodsky said that um, you know a, a triumphant church is nonsensical. And indeed, how could you have a triumphant church? Although many claim to be just that triumphant.
there is the rather interesting the the structure that supports the roof. University of Calabria, a large uh, educational uh, complex of buildings, a city within a city. It seems education itself became an industry A linear university, quite long, almost bigger than the city. Well, I exaggerate uh, that fragment of the city that we see in the background. This reminds me a little bit of a project for a school that uh, Morphosis and Tom Main did, not so big as this one, but uh, the same idea to have a pedestrian, uh, you know, walking uh, space or road in between two rows of buildings. Milan Bicocca. I don't know what is the function of this building. Uh, perhaps some some uh, um, a corporation, you know, the headquarters maybe uh, of a corporation in uh, Milan. Fondazione Pirelli Milano. Gregotti again, modern symmetries for the exasperation of Bruno Sevi, who stated very clearly that modern architecture cannot be symmetrical. But well, we see here that uh, a modern architect uh, chose symmetry in some cases of his works. But he loved monumentality and symmetry is able to induce a feeling of uh, monumentality. But it could be intimidating this uh, centralized uh, symmetrical architectonic configuration. Could be, it could be perceived as being almost authoritarian.
Vittorio Gregotti in Milan. Small sport wi square windows employed by other Italian architects and not only Italian. Centro ricerche, 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 Pirelli alla Nipoca, uh, part of the same, I guess, uh, ensemble of buildings, but this one with a different architecture, a lot of grass. And now we arrive at this town, new town in Shanghai, the Pui Pui Pujiang, Pujiang uh, in China. H is missing there, sorry, 2011. So nine years before he died. You see here how we have images of the built work as well. Rather grayish and uh, somewhat rigid, reminding one of uh, similar some similar works done by work done by David Chipperfield in, in, in China, saved by water, just like in this case. Maybe when more the vegetation will be in place, um, the feeling would be less um, dark. Vittorio Gregotti in China. Sketch as many architects do. And here is the site plan. Diagrammatical, labyrinthical also to an extent. A strange meeting between rationalism and the labyrinth. Because in a way the labyrinth is um, the scandal of of, uh, of uh, intelligence or the, a scandal for logic or when you have what is logical coupled with the, with the labyrinth you get uh, in a way what we look at here the contradiction il teatro degli arcimboldi di coca milano 1997 2002 now arcimboldi I don't know. Again, I think it's a, it's a, it's it's a, you, you wonder is it a theater or a sports arena? And it's quite mon monolithical and monumental. It's not a sports arena. It's a it's a theater, but. Uh, I'm not a great fan of Vittorio Gregotti, to be honest with you. But here and there, there are some qualities in his work. Grand Theatre, Grand Theatre of Provence in Aison Provence, in France. And grand it is, although it's good that it's not too tall. It's also good that he assumed the diagonals and uh, the diagonals uh, problematize uh, the, day, you know, the possible dangers of uh, monumentality, as we know, he rather liked. But still, this belief in um, you know in, in in the thick wall, in the in, in the masonry wall. Although it might be that it's not a masonry wall; it's just um, covered 
to give this appearance, it's possible. Um, there is here a monumentality which seems to be a little bit at odds with our times. Other architects practiced it, like Mario Botta, even a little bit uh, James Sterling in, in Stuttgart. But this work, because of its asymmetry, uh, it's more dynamic and uh, I would say more acceptable than uh, those symmetrical uh, large buildings that he built. Of course, looking at these works, one, one would uh, welcome the so-called weak architecture of Peter Eisenman, the city of culture in Santiago da Compostela in Spain. All the stone there also is used, you know, as a, as a spin for uh, good parts of the building. But uh, it would be actually interesting to compare that work by Peter Reiserman with this work by Vittorio Gregotti. And this one is a little smaller than, than the one by Peter Reiserman. Palermo Zen district housing this time. I guess the Zen of the stadium belonged to the area. And now we see some housing not too much Zen in front of the, uh, the housing units. But I like the fact that Vittorio Gregotti, uh, you know, built for those uh, in need, so to speak. I don't think uh, these are uh, apartment buildings for the rich and famous, no. And you see, there are clothes is uh, brought outside in order to dry. And yes, this uh, unglorious uh, landscape in front of the house uh, could testify that this is not one of the most, uh, uh, you know, elitist uh, areas in the city. But I like what I see here. Some young people, um, you know, uh, Saying uh, small gestures of affection to nature with simple means in a sustainable way, so to speak. A rebirth, a new beginning, reclaiming nature from the disasters brought on it in good measure by man. quite large, this uh, complex of buildings. And you know, the side effects of progress, if we are to call it so, progress. A fallen refrigerator, thrown pieces of furniture, lots of garbage. The brave new world in Europe. A bank, Brescia, 2004. Now compare this, please with this. So here is where the human beings, let's continue to call them so live, 
and this is the cathedral of money, the bank. Pristine, white, clean, symmetrical, self-assured, and self-assuring. The world of money, the world of authority and power. We see no garbage here. Exhibition design, and with this we end uh, this presentation of uh, some works by Vittorio Gregotti. This was an interesting, I, I used to know, but I forgot, an interesting experiment by uh, Vittorio Gregotti. Forgot what the theme of the exhibition was, but the attempt to uh, dislocate uh, conventional uh, physical realities from their expected positions like walls, floor, ceiling. Uh, it's a good one, I think. kind of a kaleidoscope within which the human beings, uh, the visitors of the exhibition are contemplating themselves in unexpected positions. Thank you.